Hey, Megan, can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, Danita can't get in either. Okay. I don't know. I sent her my link, but I don't know if mine is personal. You know what? If it's personalized to me, I'm not sure. Okay. We'll, we'll just, yeah, we've got just a little bit of time. If she wants to one, to, one to let you know. Thank you. I'll work, I'll work with her. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and um, for our participants that are joining us, um, we're going to get started here in just a moment. Thank you for your patience. Um, my name is uh, Megan Pomfret. I'm the Director of School Counseling here at Gainesville High School. We appreciate you joining us this evening. Um, this is our uh, elective Falooza. We are, it's kind of like our virtual elective fair. Um, we have a schedule that's posted on the Gainesville High School website um, where we will go through the various departments. Um, and you are welcome to, if you have a department that you want to see now or a little bit later, and this also will be posted on the Gainesville High School website that you can watch later if you would prefer. Um, again, my name is Megan Pomfret, and I'm going to share my screen. And if I could, if my panelists can give me a thumbs up, if that works, can you guys can see? Awesome. Thank you, panelists. Uh, and before um, I get going too much here, there is the Q&A option um, that our participants are able to utilize if you wanna post questions in there. Um, and if my panelists, if you're able to, while you're waiting to present, if you see any questions, you can answer, great. If not, not a problem. Um, so our goals for tonight is for families to gain the knowledge that you need and for students to know what they need so that they can make choices about their classes for next school year. We know there's a lot of information to process, so we wanna provide as much information as we can. Um, and we want you all to hear and see the faces of our outstanding Gainesville High School staff. We are very lucky to have the teachers that we do at Gainesville High School. And for you to gain from their expertise, um, this is a great opportunity. Um, before we jump into the um, departments that we have attending, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about the academic advising process. Um, right now, students are able to submit their um, online course requests through Student View. It is only accessible through Student View. Um, and this is not a required step. This window is open from January 24th until January 30th, but don't worry if you don't do it, that's okay. Um, this is just one way for students to communicate their options, their, their interests for next school year. We strongly encourage parents and guardians to have conversations with their students about their choices and their interests. And there are a lot of resources in parent and student view, including um, accessing your students' graduation requirements and their unofficial transcripts. So if you go to course history, you will see there's like a nice little chart with um, graphs where you can look and see where your child is in terms of their progression to graduation requirements. This is one tool that you have accessible to you, as well as printing an unofficial transcript. Um, starting from in February here on February 7th, we will start one-on-one -on -one meetings with counselors um, for, um, for students to meet individually with their school counselor. We will re review graduation requirements, we will talk about your pathway options as we're learning and, and developing this wonderful program. And we'll talk about your opportunities at Gainesville High School. Um, after the school counselor meets with students, we will input their courses and you will be able to see their course requests in student and parent view under course requests. So any changes that are made, they are automatically updated in parent and student view. So I can't stress enough how important that resource is. Um, and then afterwards, after your student meets with their counselors, we will send an email verification of courses in April. But again, parent and student view, you can always see course requests. That is your best resource, um, uh, you know, have access to information at your fingertips. And the last day that we will accept changes is May 27th. Um, and there's a s'more that we are going to be publishing on the Gainesville High School website soon that has that form. Um, the reason that we have that early deadline is the information that we take from course requests we use to create our schedule, to hire teachers, to um, get resources like books and the exciting stuff that Mr. Mayor does in his Project Lead the Way courses and to get um, new resources for our math program. We utilize that information. And so when we get into the fall, 
Um, we, we really ask students to stick, to stick to their course requests and we're not gonna be doing lots of schedule changes. So being very thoughtful from February to that May time period about what your choices are and knowing that we're gonna you know, work with families to, um, to make sure that their child is being successful. Before we start with our first uh, program, that which will be language arts, Mr. Beach, um, would you like to take a moment to say hello? Sure, thank you. Um, one of the great things about Zoom is if you don't own the link, you can keep people out. So I, I don't know who is responsible from the team, but it wasn't my fault that I was here late. Um, happy to be here. Um, thanks everybody for, for joining us. Um, one of the great things about being an educator is we get the chance to do it all over again the following year. And, and this really kicks off um, what's potentially an exciting time for um, faculty, staff and students as we start to obviously roll towards the end of the school year doing meaningful work, but have half an eye on uh, the future the, the, at Gainesville High School, at least the, the increase of the increase in course offerings that um, we're able to provide for our students. Um, and the excitement, hopefully, therefore, that students will, will get from selecting the coursework that makes sense for them. We hope the Pathways program uh, and then the, the work that our school counselors will do with students is, is going to make sense and, and help students select um, a pathway, a sequence of courses that, that makes sense to them. Um, before I pass back to Mrs. Pomfret, two things. One, thank you to all of the Gainesville High School team who are here tonight, giving up your time. I very much appreciate you doing this, the, the time investment that you've put in. Uh, the second uh, point was to talk about dual enrollment. Uh, that's one of the questions that's been, you know, that's cropped up a little bit uh, recently. What, what is the plan for dual enrollment? And the plan is to offer it, uh, but when it, when it makes sense and we have the capacity to. So our senior class next year is gonna be awfully small. Um, we're, we're not going to be able to do advanced placement plus dual enrollment plus regular coursework plus a bunch of electives just because of the, the, the size of the class and the staffing demands that that would bring. Um, so we're still going to build out our advanced placement course selection options for next year. There'll be, I think, many more AP courses uh, available to our students. And then we'll look to strategically layer dual enrollment coursework over, uh, over the top of that advanced coursework. Uh, in the subsequent school year, probably starting with 12th grade and then and then backing from there over time. So it's coming, just not not yet for next year. Anything I missed, Ms. Pomfret? Okay. Again, thanks for being here, everybody. I uh, hope this is useful tonight. So we are getting ready to jump into our first program here with Language Arts. A couple of reminders. I am putting in the chat a link to the Elective Palooza schedule. So if you want to take a look at that. Also a reminder that we do have the Q&A. If you would like to post questions, please post them in there. Um, and with that, I'm going to reshare my screen. If I can get a thumbs up, is everybody okay? Can they see that? We good? Okay. So I'm going to hand it off to Ms. Wood and Ms. Hutton. Hello everyone, my name is Catherine Wood and I am an English teacher here at Gainesville High School. And I am going to talk about three of the electives you see on the screen there. And Ms. Hutton's gonna talk about the other ones. So um, I'm gonna start off by talking a little bit about creative writing. Um, we offered that elective this year and we're hoping to grow the program in the next couple of years. Um, so if you have a student or if you are a student who is really interested in writing, if you enjoy writing creatively, or if you want to explore writing in different genres other than what you might get um, in a regular English class. So if you enjoy writing fiction or poetry or blending different forms of writing together, um, I think creative writing would be a great option for an English elective. Um, another elective that we hope to offer is called Global Connections in Multicultural Literature. And that elective is open to rising juniors and seniors. And it's for students who would like to spend a little bit more time reading and discussing literature from around the world. Um, it's for students who are interested in different aspects of culture and society. Um, again, just kind of deepening um, your reading uh, of literature just that you might not get sitting in a regular uh, English class. And then the last course I'd like to share a little bit about is the AP seminar course, which is actually um, a part of our AP capstone program. 
and it's open mainly to rising juniors and seniors with special consideration for exceptional sophomores as well. Um, it's really an intense course, but it's a great course. Um, it's the first of two. And so the seminar class focuses on analysis and argument with both writing and discussion. Um, it's looking at different texts and articles and research through different perspectives. Um, and it really does require maturity, a really strong work ethic, um, kids who are really curious about the world and want to learn things. It's a great course for kids like that, um, but it also requires flexibility and resourcefulness. So um, it's a great program. It's an awesome course uh, for kids who really are starting to notice the connections they see between the different disciplines, because it's really an interdisciplinary course, uh, mainly for students who are just, you know, want to learn more and see themselves as being college bound. So Taylor's gonna tell us a little bit about yearbook journalism and intro to speech. Uh, as Katie said, I'm Taylor Hutton. Um, and I'm going to start off with talking about yearbook. A uh, yearbook is open to any student that has an interest in photography or graphic design. Um, with the yearbook course, students work together to build the school's publication. So uh, they gain some really valuable skills that can take them on later in life, um, which is like our journalism course. Uh, students in the journalism course are learning the fundamentals of fundamentals of journalism and media. Um, and they're working to produce the school's newspaper and they're working on their writing and photography and critical thinking skills. Um, and then the speech communication class is a little different from the other two. Um, in speech communication class, the students are working on bettering their communication skills in different situations from presentations to after the dinner speeches or anything that uh, might help them moving into the real world with uh, oral communication. Just real quick, um, I put a link in the chat that it has uh, all the information we just talked about on it. So if you miss something or you wanna go back and take a look at it, it's there for you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, we really appreciate your time. If you have questions for Ms. Wood or Ms. Hutton, feel free to add them into the Q&A. Um, we can process some questions that way, or you can utilize the resource that they've posted. Um, but if they do um, choose to, to to exit the webinar. Again, thank you so much for showing up and being with us um, here today. We, we do appreciate your time. Ms. Trotashad, are you ready to talk about math? You bet. Uh, my name is Brian Trotashad and I am a math uh, teacher here. So we have uh, really excited that we find, get to offer four new courses next year that we weren't able to offer this year. Um, the courses that we have pretty much follow sort of three different trajectories. We have your traditional type of study of algebra, trigonometry, and calculus, which could take a student through algebra three, trigonometry, a pre-calculus course into calculus. Um, these are all done post-algebra two. So um, a student would have to successfully complete algebra two before they would take any of those courses. One thing we're really sort of trying to help students focus on is identifying what's really a good placement for them given their learning history that we've been having the last few years. Um, we really wanna offer students the best place that's most supportive for where they truly are with their skills and um, where they're able to be most successful. Um, the Algebra Three Trigonometry course, while we don't naturally um, want students to necessarily use that as a path to calculus, given where we are, it's a really nice option for students who may find themselves in Algebra 2 right now and struggling, again, just due to their preparation, where they could use the Algebra 3 trigonometry, which covers, um, it's basically a pre-calculus light, so to speak, um, which, and then they can still follow that with pre-calculus and into the calculus um, track, if that's something that they're interested in. So that's a nice option for students to really just sort of reflect on where they are how solid they feel with their foundation in that sort of a traditional uh, sequence after Algebra 2. Um, a, a not as traditional sequence would be through um, adding some statistics into their studies. We're gonna be offering a statistics course that's both uh, advanced placement as well as a non-advanced placement statistics course. They both will study the same basic umbrella of statistics, um, data analysis, and um, how to conduct a study, and all the stuff that is done behind the scenes whenever you hear a news report say, a new study out shows, fill in the blank, that's statistics. And so that's what we really want students to recognize. It is everywhere. It's used in so many different fields um, and it's a really useful course of study. We would recommend statistics either level to be mostly done um, as 12th grade 
or in conjunction with another more traditional math course and sequence, um, only for the reason that it doesn't actually then prepare you for the next course anywhere because it's sort of its own self-contained course of study. Um, the study of statistics, although math credit, is going to be much more focused on reading and writing. So students who really love to crunch a nice long um, equation and solve it um, is going to be—they're going to be disappointed because they're going to be writing sentences and words and analyzing numbers as opposed to coming up with some solution to a, a grand old equation. Um, but that's not to say it's not just as exciting. So um, that's the st statistics options. And then we also have our computer science options. Computer science is so nice. It also, I would recommend be done in conjunction with other math courses for a couple reasons. Um, one would be the computer science principles course does not count as a math credit. However, it's an opportunity to get your foot in the door with some study of computer science. It is an AP course but it has a much less rigorous um, traditional AP exam situation um, going on, on the, in the method in that they're assessed. Um, so the computer science principles is a great um, way to get your foot in the door. Students who are interested do not have to be advanced in math and do not have to be advanced in computers in order to be successful in that course. Um, the prerequisite is just successful algebra one completion. So that's a nice entry level. Um, the computer science A is a little bit more rigorous. We would again offer that more so for 12th graders or somebody who's already done the computer science principles course. It is a little bit more rigorous. It is also an AP course, um, but it does earn a math credit. So um, those are the different computer science courses which we have available. So again, sort of three different paths you can go working your way through, um, through different math courses. Um, and again, the computer science does not have um, high level, it doesn't have Algebra 2 as a prerequisite, all the other courses you see there do and would follow after Algebra 2. Um, and I will be happy to stick around, answer a couple questions that are in the chat or in the Q&A for a few minutes. That would be great if you don't mind, just to keep, yep. on, keep an eye on it. Thank you. All right, our next program um, department we have up is science. And Mr. Thomas is here to talk about science. I need to progress the slide, that would help. There we go, it's all you. How's everybody doing? I'm Mr. Thomas. I teach uh, physics and AP physics, um, and we're going to kind of go over some new options that uh, you guys are going to have for next year. Um, we're actually able to offer a lot more advanced placement classes than we were this year. Um, just real quick, the general sequence here, um, there, there really isn't like a, a fixed way you have to go. Um, for the advanced diploma, you do have to take four years in a, of three different disciplines. So in other words, like a bio, chem, and a physics, they're all different disciplines. So you'd need at least one of those, and then you could double up on, you know, something like that for your fourth class. Um, besides, you know, the, the, re the regular bio and chemistry classes, uh, next year we'll be able to offer a, a chemistry two, which is more like a, a forensic science class. So if you're in chemistry and want to continue on with that. That creating an app, for instance, something like that. Um, and then going through a storyboard, how do you create a plot for a game or how do you make a game flow? And then uh, eventually students actually create their own video games, which is pretty cool. And then they compete with each other and, you know, that gets a little heated, but the competition is always, is always, uh, always good. Um, so if uh, you all have questions, same thing, Q&A, I'm here. Um, email is probably the best, right? My name, you see my name on the, uh, on the screen there, M-E-H-R, that's my email. Um, but uh, I was going to say something. Oh, yeah. Project Lead the Way. If you do have questions or comments about the Project Lead the Way classes, a lot of people generally do. If you go to pltw.org, and I'll put it in the chat in a second, um, that'll answer a lot of questions, right? Basic overviews, curriculum, uh, examples. Um, it has um, you know, interviews with teachers and staff and stuff like that on that website that really go over what, uh, what those classes are all about. So uh, that's all at CT. So what's really cool about this program, uh, for our transfer students, um, the project lead the way, the engineering, that is a part of our engineering design and construction pathway. So if you are a transfer student to Gainesville High School and you're here on this particular pathway, you would need to ensure you have a project lead the way class all through high school. Um, and you guys seem like you're doing some pretty cool stuff down the CTE hallway. Um, one, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. If you don't mind sticking around just a little bit just to watch the, the chat, that would be great. Or the Q&A, excuse me, that would be great. Um, in the chat, I have put a link to the Gainesville High School academic advising page. 
This includes various resources, including the course request form. So if students want to preview that, it's already on there. You will do this with your school counselor. You don't need to fill it out beforehand. But if you want to see all of the courses that we're offering there, um, I also have something called the pathways menu. So if you want to see you know, what classes you're taking or you can't remember what pathway you picked and what you're interested in, you can take a look at that pathways menu to um, kind of review what courses would be considered a part of that particular pathway. Um, there's a, I'm gonna answer live, there's a, a question in the chat about pathways that are CTE courses. Um, it really depends um, what, what pathway are this. So they're engineering, design and construction. There's a coding, gaming and robotics. Um, the criminal justice pathway, that's a career technical education. Our nutrition and wellness, our health and fitness pathway, excuse me, that includes the nutrition and wellness classes. So I would encourage you to click on the link that is in the, the chat that takes you to our academic advising page. So you can look at that pathways menu. Um, you can also ask any of your teachers or go visit Dr. Scott, um, our pathways coordinator, and he may be able to answer any of the questions. Um, one more question in the chat that I'm going to answer live. Someone did ask if we've already reviewed the language arts selective. We have, but don't worry. We are going to um, post this webinar soon on our website, as well as this presentation. And you can always talk to your language arts teacher if you miss something that you're interested in. So please don't feel like this is your only opportunity to learn about um, the electives language arts will be offering. Okay. Um, we're slightly early, but Ms. Mc uh, Chef, are you able to start talking about um, your fax classes? Sure, yeah, I just need to unmute myself first. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Jennifer McKee Acevedo. I am the Family Consumer Science or fax department chair at Gainesville High School. Currently, this school year, we were able to offer independent living and nutrition and wellness. And as Ms. Pomfret said earlier, that the nutrition and wellness is part of the um, health pathway. Um, the courses are pretty straightforward. Uh, next year, we're going to be able to offer child development and parenting and early childhood education. I'll put a little blurb on the presentation about each one of the courses. This year, typically in my experience, independent living is mostly freshmen or 10th graders. That's not to say I don't have that random 11th or 12th grader in there, but it's usually the gateway course for family consumer science. In this, kids learn a little bit about themselves, a little bit about their environment, culture, uh, family work life balance. Um, and then we do a bit of light cooking and sewing as well. So they get that, if they were able to do the wheel in middle school, they get that back again, because I know that is a little bit of what they miss the most. Um, then we progress on to either nutrition and wellness or child development and parenting. Nutrition and wellness, they're going to recreate and prepare recipes while learning principles of cooking and investigate principles of nutrition by planning menus. We do a bit of safety and sanitation as well. Um, we take a little bit of a deep dive in there in that. And then second semester, as we move through this, they're creating their individual wellness plans. And then we're also going to go back and tweak some of the things that the kids uh, prepared during semester one that they cooked and make them the healthier, better for you versions that don't taste institutionalized. Um, so they look take, and taste just as good as the originals, um, but with less calories, less sodium and better for you. In child development parenting, it's just like it sounds, uh, learn about human growth and development along with the milestones that children go through and how to deal with all those lovely pieces of life as we put them together. Um, and a big part that I like to push during child development and parenting is that when you do have a child, you are your child's first teacher. So setting your child up for success when they go to preschool, when they start elementary school into high school. Um, early childhood education, one, is going to be offered next school year. Um, it is a two-part course, not to say that you have to take one, then take the other. Uh, this is more for more mature, older students. Um, and it's because they're pre being prepared to be primary care providers of child care services. They're also going to be working with our preschool children, our pre-K kids, 
that are right next door under the supervision of their instructor, along with the supervision of the preschool teacher and her aide. So that is family consumer science in a nutshell for the next year at Gainesville High School. Thank you, Chef. Um, I, I apologize if you mentioned this, but that early childhood education course is worth two credit. I'm sorry, it's two blocks. Mm -hmm. So it will be two periods of the school day. Um, so that is something for our, our, our upperclassmen that are considering this course. It's an excellent opportunity to really get some hands-on experience with students. And we're very excited that we get to engage with our preschool um, in this way. Something to consider with any of your courses that you're taking, students need to earn what we call a sequential elective. And that's essentially like a grouping of two electives. So that could be something like art one or art two, um, independent living and nutrition and wellness count as a sequence, uh, a, a, excuse me, a sequential electives. Project lead the way, like if you take two classes that can count as your sequence of electives. So your school council will review these requirements um, but do keep in mind as you're progressing through high school and you're working towards your graduation requirements, we've also always got to be making sure that we're meeting um, all of the requirements of the standards or the advanced diploma. And the standard or advanced, um, they are both high school diplomas in the state of Virginia, both equally valuable. They just um, have different components and requirements, which your counselor can review that with you. Um, Chef, if you don't mind kind of hanging out and, and watching the chat just for a minute, if you have any questions, um, Chef is always available. She's fantastic and the cooking is like super good. So that is a class you want to, I often benefit from eating the things that her kids make. So we are very grateful to have Chef with us. Um, we are now going to move on to our gifted program. We have Mr. Doolin with us. If I could progress the slide. There we go. Mr. Doolin, it's all yours. Thank you, Ms. Pomfret, and thank you for putting this together for us. We um, are going to talk a little bit about gifted education. I'm the gifted education department chair at Gainesville. And the GEMS class, the gifted education multidisciplinary seminar class, uh, would be available to juniors and seniors who are in the gifted ed program. So the Ninth and 10th graders for gifted education, we do signet seminars. We pull students out of health and PE classes and they progress through seminars in their ninth grade year. And then they would uh, go on and, and do that into the 10th grade year. In 11th grade, students have an option uh, to continue uh, or to extend what, what they've been doing through this GEMS course. Students in 11th and 12th grade still attend signet seminars where they will pick random classes that they attend throughout the year. And, and the goal of our gifted program is to uh, really help students pursue their academic passions and to offer challenging academic opportunities for them. So as you can imagine, the Pathways program is a, is a perfect fit for a, a lot of our gifted students. Uh, we have a wide ar array of advanced course offerings at Gainesville so that, that really does fit well with the, the needs of our gifted education students. A, an elective course that, that you can take your junior and senior year is, is GEMS. And as to what GEMS is, it's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a wide ranging class and, and it, it really is designed to be a, a, a class that is kind of a, a, a catch your breath and, and let's kind of hit pause and let's look at things big picture uh, and you really get to go deep into you know, where the, the, the teacher of the course takes it and, and to where the students' interests lie. The GEMS uh, uh, curriculum focuses on the, the American experience, looking at, at it through different lenses. And uh, it, it really opens it up to like uh, going deep into, into the, the interest of, of the students in the class and the academic interest of the, the teacher teaching the class. And it, you can examine uh, the American experience in the course through literature, history, science, visual and performing arts, you name it. Uh, the class is a, a half credit class because every other class period is an independent study for the students. And, and it, uh, it, we decided to go with that option uh, to give students, a, again, a class kind of, you know, catch your breath. Uh, we, there is definitely, you know, going to be work outside of the class, 
but this is not a, a high volume level of work outside the class course. This is an opportunity to, if you, if you think of the seminars that you're, you're in for Signet, uh, try to imagine that on a, on a regular reoccurring basis uh, with, with your peers. So there's quite a bit of a flexibility to collaborate with peers uh, through, through various uh, projects and uh, quite a bit of flexibility academically to go deep into some of these, these topics. And it's, uh, if you talk to students at other schools uh, who've had this course, uh, I, I think a lot of them will tell you it was one of the favorite classes that they, they had in high school. Uh, so next year, what we're gonna do is we will combine uh, 11th and 12th graders uh, based on numbers and all likelihood it'll be one combined class and uh, available for uh, the gifted ed students who elect to do it. Uh, we, we hope to see you in it. Uh, if you have any questions, I, I will be here and, and can definitely help in the, uh, the Q&A. Thank you very much, Mr. Dolan. Um, if you, again, if you have questions, please feel free to post them in the Q&A. I put a couple of resources in the chat, including um, the academic advising page, the course catalog, um, some people have had questions about sequential electives. Again, your school council will always review that with you, but if you want to see the full list, you can look in the course catalog. Um, we're a little bit early, but um, is our PE department ready? You have to do spirit fingers if you're ready. Are you ready? Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> all right, PE, it's all you. Oh, wait, I need to change the slide. Excuse me. There you go. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am Samantha Donlin. I'm the HP department chair. Um, I will be giving you guys just some quick information about two of our PE electives that we offer to our 11th and 12th graders. Um, first, I'm going to talk to you guys about our weight training course. Uh, this course was offered this year. Uh, we had one section, hoping for multiple more next year. Uh, the general idea of weight training, the students are getting dressed every day. Every day they have class. They're doing activity. They're getting changed. They're sweating. So then, you know, feminine or hygiene, make sure they bring all their stuff in. But the general idea for this course is that they are working on strength training. So they are learning how to lift weights properly um, in order to avoid injury and to really get, you know, the full benefit of that workout, um, as well as how to, you know, what different types of exercise work, which different muscle groups and so on and so forth. So that by the end of the course, the goal is that the student has the knowledge to create their own strength training program. And then as well as having the skill to be able to carry out that program that they have created for them. Um, so just makes them much more comfortable around the weight room and being able to feel confident in their knowledge and their skills um, lifting those weights. The advanced PE personal fitness class, uh, that class is, I guess it, I could compare it to their HP1 and HP2 classes that they take as a ninth and a 10th grader, but we're going for you know, we're going up to that next level. So with this course, we're trying to expose them to different activities that maybe they don't generally see in their normal PE classes. Uh, we're exposing them to different types of recreational activities, different types of workouts. Uh, there is a tiny classroom component going over nutrition and body systems. Uh, but ultimately, we want these kids to walk away from this course feeling comfortable and having an idea of Later on in my life, as my life evolves and I get older and my weight fluctuates and my lifestyle changes, how am I going to adapt to that as a, you know, as a student, as a person, um, if I, you know, develop an injury where I can't really play an impact sport anymore, uh, what type of, you know, activity can I kind of transfer to, to still be able uh, to remain healthy, to be physically active, you know, for the rest of um, our lifetime. So they will get, you know, the recreational activities. We might, something different they might see with that that they wouldn't see in their normal PE classes might be um, archery. Archery is maybe something we don't see super often. Uh, the different types of workouts, maybe like bar, Pilates, Zumba, yoga, stuff like that. So more low impact type stuff. Um, and then just go over, you know, more into the nutrition, the body systems. How do I treat my body if I injure it? Um, how do I adapt, you know, my diet and my nutrition if, I, you know, end up having some sort of lactose intolerance or gluten intolerance or something like that. So how do I adapt as my life changes? So those are my two courses. Um, I'm going to let Mr. Nimro take over for the Unified PE course. All right. So I'm going to sell you guys on the Unified <laughs> PE course, and it is uh, a pretty fantastic opportunity. Um, it's a course, as it says on the slide there, it's a course where we uh, create a partnership uh, between our 
uh, general education and special education students. So we have folks of varying abilities and it functions like a traditional PE class in the sense that we dress out every day and you're doing PE every day, except that we've got this emphasis on relationships. And there's a, uh, an association or partnership between Unified PE, which is a national program and the Special Olympics. So we actually have opportunities to be part of uh, various sporting events. Today, we had a basketball game at the school. And one of the really neat things about it is that you're giving some students opportunities that might not exist in other arenas. And if you were in the gym at Gainesville High School today, you would have felt the electricity and the positivity and the enthusiasm uh, that's going on in the court when, when these kids are together. Um, another couple of things about it, it, it's something where we really get to focus on leadership skills. And as I said before, relationship building, uh, it, it's such a meaningful, impactful program for students um, of all abilities. And so it, it, it's, it's a program that we really want to grow. Right now, as I said, we've got um, basketball games that are uh, set up with other schools in the division. Uh, we're going to do uh, uh, track and field events as well. And that's something where the sky's really the limit. We're already talking about potentially partnering with cheerleading and some of the other uh, sports at the school. Uh, as far as the structure of the course, it's got, uh, or, or at least besides the, um, the, the day in and day out, it is a one credit course. Um, if you're into inclusivity and you're a positive person, a kind person, uh, it, it might be the place for you. If you're somebody that loves the traditional workload and assignments, you're prepared to be distraught. It, it really is that PE component. Uh, so as far as an elective where maybe it's not going to create as much obligation and burden as far as work and to do stuff, it, it's not that course. Um, just a great opportunity. Uh, it's a program that we really need to grow. So if you're, if you're interested in something like that, definitely reach out and let me know if you have other questions about Unified PE. Thanks. I can say as someone who got to watch the Unified game today, it, it truly was electric and very exciting. Um, it was great to see so many of our kids supporting um, and to see our players out there. Um, you guys are doing a great job with the program. So um, thank you for that for that work. Uh, there is a question, um, Ms. Donnellan, in the Q&A. Um, I don't know if you want to, oh, you're answering it. Do you want to answer it live or you can continue your, because you got to back I, I can do it live. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the question was, will team-based sports be included in advanced PE, personal fitness, volleyball, basketball, et cetera? Uh, yes, absolutely. We will dabble with individual sports. We'll dabble with team sports, net sports, wall sports. We'll kind of do a little bit of everything when it comes to the recreation. Um, I can't say we'll spend so much time with the traditional stuff because these kids have gotten a lot of those traditional sports. I'm not saying it won't ever happen, but as someone that's in the gym with these kids all the time, they get a good amount of basketball, a good amount of volleyball, a good amount of soccer. So they'll dabble with it a little bit, but the emphasis is going to be on trying to showing, trying to show them new things, exposing them to new things. Thank you. Okay. Well, that was health and PE. And um, so lots of great options there. And this is sort of like yearbook, which we mentioned earlier um, in the webinar. You can take these elective electives multiple times and earn credit. So you could take weight training twice, or you can do two years of unified PE or the personal fitness. So you can do those multiple times if a student were to enjoy them. And I'm those do count as a sequence. So as long as you have two um, in that PE category, that would count as a sequence. Okay. Um, our next program that is up is our SALC, also known as Leadership. Um, Mr. Miller, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. I'm Mr. Miller, and uh, I teach SALC here at Gainesville. Um, and just to kind of get into what SALC is, because I, I think there are some misconceptions out there. We do are trying to bring the leadership education component to that. Um, this year, we've been focusing on the Enneagram. We hope to have Ms. Pumford in to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but self-reflecting, working on blogs um, and skills is something that we're trying to bring more and more to the class, um, even in bringing it to uh, when we get the numbers, um, that being the initial class with Leadership One. Um, the thing that most people know about SCLC, I think, um, is that we kind of run dances, we run pep rally, we run spirit weeks, which is exciting and um, is really exciting with the new school um, and trying to figure out what goes with SCA, what goes with um, SCLC. Um, 
just as a general guideline, SELC tries to take the things that um, need a program that meets every day or every other day instead of a club that maybe meets once a month, twice a month. Um, and so those types of things like dances, pep rally, spirit weeks um, are things that SELC is going to take on, um, including uh, things like uh, appreciation weeks. This week is Principal's Appreciation Week. We uh, recorded a video that we sent out and different things like that, as well as Wellness Week we had last week. Um, on top of that, we're also doing a lot with Awareness Months. We had um, Hispanic Heritage Month earlier this year, and we are about to start Black History Month, um, where SELC will be planning events and uh, have announcements, music in the hallways during and after school, things like that. Um, another component of SCLC is we like, we're trying to, um, create school improvements. It is brand new. Um, but there are things that we want to do to make it more feel like it's owned, owned by the students, um, make it feel like it's lived in things like that. Um, whether that's suggesting where we can have a little bit more furniture or whether that's boards or display cases, we're currently working on the display cases in the red commons um, for sports. So things like that are projects that we'll tackle. Um, and then student life improvements are things that we're gonna try and tackle. We've done town halls and our kids have participated in forums that uh, Mr. Beach put on over the summer um, to try and make suggestions to administration and other uh, others on how we can improve student life. Um, whether that's games, whether that's more dances, things like that. Uh, I think our kids do a good job on social media so far of trying to get more participation from the, the population in general. Um, there will be leadership one, two, and three. So this is open to sophomores, juniors, and seniors, uh, and they can take it in a sequence, one, two, three, um, with uh, deference being given to seniors first. Um, there's an application process. That application is out currently. Uh, was posted on social media and is on the website and on Canvas, was sent out in the Canvas uh, update last week. After the deadline of April 1st, there will be an interview process where we bring you in um, with me and a few other staff members and then kind of go about building the best class um, to build the best Gainesville in the future. Thank you. Um, and on the kind of the technical side is we're doing academic advising when a student expresses interest in SALC, um, the school counselor will list it as an al alternate. Um, we'll have it and they need to complete the application. So they'll, they'll count it as their alternate elective. They'll complete the application. They'll give us another elective that they're interested in in case, in case SALC doesn't work out. And then once Mr. Miller confirms who's in the program, we'll swap and put SALC into their main course requests. But there's it's a two-parter. You've got to make sure your counselor knows so we can have it in your request and that you complete that application for Mr. Miller. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Your team, I mean, your kids have done so much this year in such a short amount of time. It's really impressive. Um, the work that they've done. Um, there is a question in the Q&A, is SALC an elective or an extracurricular? Do you want to tackle that a little bit? I know that's been, yeah. um, we've got about one minute if you can kind of parse that a little bit. Of course. No, it, it does sound a bit like an elective and we're always trying to kind of parse that line of which side do we are we on. And it's definitely a class, it's an elective um, and uh, it can be taken sequence three years in a row. We've had students do that. Um, where they really be in training to be a, in a leadership role, even in the leadership class, if they were to take it three years in a row, um, which is where we're really trying to get the kids to go that are in leadership one as sophomores. Uh, from there, there are many extracurricular requirements um, in terms of setting up for homecoming and things like that. The students know about those well in advance and, uh, we just make sure, I mean, right now, the uh, Ms. Coach Nimro talked about Unified. We, that's an extracurricular that is going to be required for our kids to come help um, with things like clock and things that just volunteer stuff that helps out the school. And that's where we're going with it. Okay. That kind of yeah, that's great. Yeah. So it is a class. Um, there are after school times that are required um, for, for the program. But thank you so much, Mr. Miller. If you don't hang up, just hang out just a couple of minutes in case any questions pop up. But we are going to hand it off to our performing arts. 
Hey everyone. Oh, uh, Ms. Pomfret, I think we're on. While Ms. Pomfret's finding the slide. Um, I'm uh, Ms. Malachek. I am the orchestra teacher and um, here we go. And uh, the performing arts department chair as well. So we have um, four different disciplines within the performing arts. Um, so just kind of quickly going through because there are a number of options within each discipline uh, that you can select from. So within band, um, we have um, intermediate uh, band and intermediate percussion. Those classes are designed for rising ninth graders. Um, and we recommend that you have had experience at the middle school level playing a band instrument. Um, intermediate band is for wind players and intermediate percussion is for students that play all of the percussion instruments, drums, mallets, um, all of the accessories. Accelerated band is for students in 10th, 11th or 12th grade. Um, and advanced band is the select band um, that is also a half extra half credit weight on your GPA. Um, there's also marching band, which is available as a class in the fall semester. And um, it's strongly encouraged that if you are in marching band, that you are also enrolled in a band class during the day. Um, for theater, we have um, several different theater offerings. Theater one, two, and three are um, acting based classes. And uh, students that are interested in theater one, it's usually entry level class. There's no audition required. Um, theater two and theater three is by audition or by teacher recommendation. Um, if you're interested in uh, auditioning, you can talk to our theater teacher, Ms. Maxted. You can send her an email um, or you can stop by her room during the day um, or after school. And then the other non-audition class that we offer is technical theater, and that focuses on kind of the behind the scenes um, offerings. So so sound and lighting design, scenic design, costuming, makeup, um, set construction, all of that sort of stuff falls into the technical theater side of things. Um, for orchestra, uh, we have three different offerings available. Intermediate orchestra is for ninth grade students. And we recommend that you have middle school experience playing a string instrument for intermediate orchestra. Um, and accelerated orchestra is for 10th, 11th, and 12th grade students. And um, one year of high school instruction is recommended. Those two classes you do not have to audition for. Um, and then for advanced orchestra, open to students in grades 9 through 12. And that is um, by audition and you can, uh, students that are currently in class with me can talk to me about the audition process. If you are at the middle school level, um, I will be coming by and releasing materials, but you can always send me an email or talk to your um, middle school teacher about the audition if you are interested. Um, and auditions will take place in um, April. But I'll be releasing the, the music mid-March. Um, and all of these classes that we have for performing arts are all sequential electives. Um, so that fulfills that requirement in your diploma as well as the fine or technical arts credit that you need. Um, for choir, we have two non-auditioned choirs, um, intermediate bass choir and intermediate treble choir are for students in grades nine through 12. Um, and you do not have to have any experience being in a choir before to be in either of these ensembles. So if you're interested in singing, but you've never been in a choir before, um, those uh, both intermediate bass and intermediate treble choir are great options for you. Um, if you are interested in auditioning, accelerated treble choir um, is open to students in grades nine through 12. And advanced choir is also open to students in grades nine through 12. Um, by audition. You can see Mrs. Shepard for an appointment um, or you can send her an email if you have a question. And there was a question um, from uh, somebody earlier wondering about if we offer guitar. We do not currently offer guitar. Thank you very, very much. Um, and um, Ms. Mashak, I apologize for the slide snafu. My, yeah, my... no problem. <laughs> All right. If you can hang out just for a moment in case there's any questions. Um, but we are now going to move on to the Project Lead the Way biomedical um, courses. Um, so this slide is up. And we have Ms. Nichols, who is here with us. Hello. 
Um, thank you guys all for being here and I'm excited to talk to you about Project Lead the Way. It's uh, a four year course. Uh, it is a national curriculum and we're really excited to have it uh, with us at Gainesville. Uh, the only class that carries no prerequisite would be the principles of biomedical science. Uh, and although it is the beginning of a four year path, we um, welcome sophomores, juniors and seniors um, in the course. Um, next year, we'll also be offering the second year course, which is human body systems. Um, the third year and fourth year courses we will roll out as we, um, as we go along. Uh, people who are in the students who are in the criminology pathway will also be taking um, principles of biomedical science and human body systems. Uh, and those will, even though they're part of a pathway, they do count um, for you as, as electives. Um, in principles of biomedical science, we do a lot of hands-on stuff. Our first unit is forensics. We cover um, a unit of patient care, uh, um, epidemics and outbreaks, and then some. we do a little bit of some engineering uh, towards the end of the year. Trying the, the first semester is, um, again, like I said, all forensics. And then the second semester is giving you a little bit uh, a taste of what's gonna come in the, in the following three years. Um, there is an exam, a national exam each year uh, that we take, um, and the, the, that, that all is done online, um, and we'll get those scores back fairly um, quickly, I, from what I understand, uh, and so there is that um, at the end of each year, uh, although there's obviously it's not an SOL class. In human body systems, the focus changes um, less on sort of a generalized view and more um, talking about, um, although it's um, some anatomy and physiology, we'll also be talking about most of the other body systems, a little bit about kinesiology, which would be how the body works together to make movement uh, and, and things along those lines. So we're looking forward to uh, having some folks try out year one. Um, if you, you know, saw what kids were doing and you were interested, we got a lot of interesting labs and things that we do. And then those who are with us for year one, we're hoping to see many of you in year two. Thank you. It's a very um, exciting program with a lot of interest in that biomedical pathway in the biomedical program. Um, so as Ms. Nichols mentioned, the um, first two years, at least of the bio, the Project Lead the Way biomedical classes are part of the criminal justice pathway. And then there's also the biomedical pathway, which is the biomedical pathway is a transferable program for our transfer students. Um, something that's important to, to point out that the, the Project Lead the Way Biomedical Science classes are actually career and technical education credits. So they, there's a lot of science that you will be doing that's very central to the program. But when you're doing, it, it can't supplant like taking chemistry. Um, you still have science classes and you have the CTE courses as well. Um, Ms. Nichols, there's a question in the chat that, uh, excuse me, the Q&A that says, with all four biomedical courses be available by the time that current sophomores are seniors? Um, I think the official answer to that is maybe. Um, a lot of it will depend on student interest if we have enough interest to double up uh, those two courses uh, for current sophomores. Um, next year, we're definitely only offering human body systems the year after when those folks are seniors. Um, it's in discussion. Well, I guess that's where we'll leave that. Yeah. And as with every of our programs, you know, student interest drives everything um, in terms of, you know, we've got two students that sign up for a course that isn't a course that we're going to run. But if we have lots of kids, that's an indicator that we need to be paying attention and running those those courses for for our students. Uh, Ms. Nichols, thank you so much. If you don't mind hanging around a little bit and just watching the Q&A, that would be fantastic. Um, and I am excited to hand over to Ms. Williams, who is going to speak about business and marketing for us. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Leslie Williams. I'm the business and marketing department chair. And uh, these are the courses that we'll be offering for next year. Uh, principles of business and marketing. Um, and you see that they are in uh, both columns there for the business and IT courses, as well as marketing. It's kind of an intro uh, umbrella course that gives students um, a, a look at um, business in terms of uh, different aspects of it, uh, marketing in terms of um, just some basic functions uh, and principles in both uh, arenas. 
once students learn um, about those different areas, they can decide if they want to continue with um, furthering their knowledge uh, in terms of business or if they want to look more at uh, the marketing courses. Uh, some business courses that we have in terms of uh, computers, there is uh, digital applications. Students learn about um, various problem solving skills. They are introduced to word processing, uh, other applications uh, like Google and uh, spreadsheets and um, uh, other uh, graphics and things of that nature. That course uh, is open to ninth graders, uh, but um, all grade levels can take uh, that course. The principal's classes are um, primarily freshmen, but uh, 10th graders also are able to take that course. Computer Information Systems uh, has uh, a first year and a second year, uh, the Advanced Computer Information Systems course. Uh, in those two classes, students are focused on the uh, Microsoft Office suite of programs. They learn word processing, uh, PowerPoint, Excel, Access. They have the opportunity to take uh, certification exams in um, the Microsoft uh, program. So right now our students are preparing, uh, for our first year students, they're preparing to take their certification exam for Microsoft. Uh, advanced students are preparing to take the certification exam and access the database program. Um, taking and earning those uh, Microsoft certifications allow students to satisfy the CTE industry credential requirement that they have for graduation. Other uh, certifications that students um, will be offered in those courses are the opportunity to certify in, in all four programs, so PowerPoint, and uh, Excel as well. Next year, uh, we're introducing design multimedia and uh, web technologies. This course gives students the opportunity to um, learn computer skills uh, in more of an artistic sense. It's more of a, um, it lends itself more to graphic design and uh, students learn Adobe and they also have an opportunity to earn a certification in Adobe if they take that course. We'll be uh, adding the advanced level to that the following year. Uh, we'll have uh, accounting offered to students next year. So students get to learn about the accounting cycle uh, as it applies to business. Uh, so if your students like numbers, they, um, you know, our number crunchers, then accounting might be uh, something of interest to them. We'll also have advanced accounting uh, offered uh, following this uh, as that uh, particular program grows. Then there's business management. Uh, students learn how to create a business plan, how to um, uh, the various functions of a business, uh, ownership, operation, execution, and, um, and things of that nature. As far as our marketing courses, uh, again, there is the principal's course, which is an intro, but then we have sports, entertainment, and recreation marketing, and the advanced uh, level of that course as well. Students in those courses learn about um, marketing uh, concepts and principles, but also uh, promotion in those different arenas, being sports, entertainment, and uh, the recreation industries. Uh, also note that uh, any courses that say advanced carry a half credit uh, weight. So that is uh, another opportunity uh, for students um, as they go through and take uh, the courses in our programs. Fantastic. Thank you so much. There's lots of options in business and marketing, lots of options for sequential electives as well, and to earn that certification exam, which is a requirement for graduation. And um, so you can take the certification exam through courses such as this or Project Lead the Way, but also in economics and personal finance that juniors take, they will have an opportunity. Um, but these business courses do offer many opportunities for students to have certifications on their resume. So great opportunities here. Ms. Williams, if you don't mind hanging out just for a couple minutes, just watching the q and I'd appreciate it. Um, and then we're going to hand it over to our visual arts team with Ms. Marshall Greason. Hi there, uh, I'm Ms. Marshall Greason or Ms. MG and I'm the visual arts department chair. So up in the left hand, well yeah it is left hand corner, um, there's a little QR code that attaches itself to a PowerPoint presentation that gives you 
a lot more information and more importantly, visuals uh, for each different course. Um, I think sometimes like seeing is believing. So uh, if you're interested in the visual arts courses, please check out the PowerPoint and you'll see examples of some of the projects that you'll be doing um, in each of the classes. Cause I can talk about it, but if you see it, that you know, usually turns into a believer moment. Um, so usually our entry level courses for the visual arts are art one and photo one. Uh, they also serve as uh, sequentials. So that will fulfill that requirement for your um, advanced diploma. Um, art one is an entry level uh, students. We basically baseline everybody's skills. We work on shading, drawing skills. Uh, basic painting skills, uh, ceramic skills, which is clay, um, mixed media, uh, watercolor, um, a lot of skill development and just getting everybody ready. Uh, photo is uh, digital photography. It is not darkroom photography. Uh, you do not need to have a camera. Our department is well prepared with many cameras. Um, students work on MacBooks. Uh, and they use um, Adobe Photoshop. Um, membership to that is included with um, the class. So then from there, your options in photo one, you can go up to photo two, or sorry, <laughs> in art one, you obviously would go to art two. Um, in art two, we expand on what we're learning in, um, a lot more expressive based projects. Now that you have the skills, you have more choices in both your subject matter and your media. Um, you also have the option to shoot over into computer art, which is using um, digital in collaboration with your traditional art, whether you're a photographer or you're an artist. Um, art two also hits on figure drawing, portrait drawing, um, a lot of stuff. Check out the PowerPoint. And then from there with Art 2, it splits. You can either take Art 3 or Pre-AP Portfolio or Portfolio Review. Um, this, that Art 3 is for students that really like art, but they're just, they're not really thinking about studying it in college. Um, they just want it, you know, it's a more of a fun, less rigor. Um, and we cover, um, again, just continuing on with different ceramic skills, uh, different printmaking skills, uh, drawing and then pre AP portfolio, you are creating a, um, you're basically getting ready for that portfolio for um, your college review. Um, many visual arts departments in college require you to go to um, submit a digital portfolio. And so we're getting you ready. We're doing a lot of still lives. We're doing figure drawing. Um, we're working with charcoal. Uh, we're incorporating digital. We're doing some collaging. Um, we're just, again, building on those skills you've learned in art too. Um, and then as a senior, or um, if you know, you've know you proved yourself to be a very advanced student, um, your next level is AP 2D or drawing um, or art four. Um, AP 2D and drawing, basically it's, it is an AP level class. Um, you're creating a series of work uh, independently to choosing your media, choosing your uh, subject matter, um, a cohesive series. Um, it's a great class. It's a lot. It's very rigorous. Um, a lot. You are working on your artwork at home. Um, but for students that really want to develop their style, um, are really interested in pursuing their own um, art series, I highly recommend it. Um, art four, again, less rigor. Still, you're creating a series, but the amount of artwork and the rigor is less. Now, shooting over to the right side, after photo one, you can take photo two, um, which is again, where you're developing the skills you've learned in photo one, your portraiture, all the different things that you're learning in there, um, creating more personal-based series. And then that also filters up to AP photo, um, where again, you're creating a series of work um, of your own, um, albeit just photography or combining your photography with digital, um, that's your last choice. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I do portfolio reviews. So if you're at all interested, if you are, um, you have a high skill level um, and you're, you're a sophomore and you'd really like to catch up and enter um, Pre-AP portfolio next year, you're welcome to send me an email and I can review your portfolio to determine if you'll be successful at that level.
Thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate you going over the art. We have They've already been doing beautiful artwork um, in the hallways. Um, they've been posting everywhere. So it's really exciting to see their work they're doing. So thank you so much, Ms. MG. If you don't mind just hanging out for like another couple of minutes, just to see if anything pops up in the chat or the Q&A, excuse me. Um, and then I'm gonna hand up to last, but certainly not least, um, we have our World Languages program and I'm gonna hand it over to Ms. McDonald. Hi, um, I'm Ms. McDonald, World Languages Department Chair, um, Spanish teacher. I'm gonna give you a little overview of the World Language Department and also the courses that we're offering for next year. So um, at Gainesville High School, the World Language Department, our main focus is to really create lifelong language learners and then also stress the relevancy of obviously learning a foreign language. Um, we really wanna make sure students are engaged in the rigorous curriculum, stressing the importance of cross-content connections, intercultural worldview, and then also cultural awareness and sensitivity. Um, all languages are obviously gonna align with the 2021 standards that were just um, adopted. And then our key components with that are culture, connections, comparisons, and community. And then our big topic obviously is communication, which is why you take a language. That's the whole goal. Um, we do focus also on the component of literacy and interculturality, um, you know, with the literacy, that's kind of our big umbrella um, in Prince William County. We're focusing on that. So for next year, um, we will be offering Spanish one through five. Um, and then obviously, just as said earlier, um, we do offer advanced level three, advanced four, and then AP five. Um, French will be the same with French one through five, and then level advanced three, advanced four, and AP five. Um, ASL will be levels one through three, and then Spanish for fluent or native speakers is levels one and two. Um, I did want to just kind of talk about the difference between some of our advanced level classes that we offer in levels three and four. Um, Having taught both, I feel I feel like some of the key curricular concepts, they're gonna be the same. You're gonna get those same um, topics covered in both, but there is definitely a difference with the rigor and the pace. Um, you know, the advanced classes are gonna be slightly accelerated. Um, they're gonna be aligned with the AP themes, with the vocabulary, and then students will also be um, exposed to the, I guess, the format of the AP test as we get them prepared for that. Um, and those are half weights. So advanced three, advanced four, students will be getting an additional bump to their GPA with the half weight. Um, please also, if your student is a native speaker or heritage Spanish speaker, um, and they wanna explore um, those programs, I really encourage them to do that. Um, we do encourage students to start in level one for the fluent speakers course. Um, and some middle schools do also have this available as you go into the language program. Um, we're excited in the department to be offering um, the ASL club to really recruit and see some interest in sign language um, and the multicultural club, which will also have student organizations under, under that umbrella. Um, next year, we are excited to um, pretty much have this French and Spanish Honor Society in full swing. And then um, we are also under the pathways, the world language and culture pathway. Students um, need to take six courses for that pathway, two of which are AP or AP courses. Um, the document for that pathways program is available on the website. It's almost like a menu. And then um, counselors will also be discussing that document with students when they schedule. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was, thank you for talking about world languages. Um, and as a reminder for those on the advanced studies diploma, you need to have three years of one mm -hmm. world language or two years of two. Um, um, high school level world language that was taken in middle school does count as high school credit. So that would follow with the student. Yep. Um, if you choose to do the standard diploma, you can still use two, um, two years of a language to progress you towards your sequential elective, but it's kind of different buckets with the advanced studies diploma. Your, your counselor can help you to navigate that. Um, there is a question in the Q&A. Mm -hmm. Ms. McDonald, would you mind answering that question live? Yeah, I'm, trying, I'm live? trying to find it right now. I'm not... Okay. 
So it says, speaking of honor societies. Oh, yes. that's actually for music. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> so I will have to get back on that question. I You're okay. Know, um, unfortunately, Ms. Malachek had to, had to step out, but I will make sure that we get an answer for you um, in regards mm -hmm. to that question. So, sorry, I saw Miss M and I went to. I know, I right? Um, we understand. Yes. We understand. <laughs> So uh, again, if you all can just hang out um, for just a moment with me, just if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A. We are happy to answer them. Um, but while we wait for questions, I am also going to remind you of some important academic advising resources. So I posted earlier and I'm going to post it again. The academic advising website that posts uh, excuse me, that hosts rather um, course request forms, information on pathways. There's a lot of information on there, including an academic advising s'more. Um, the rising ninth grade one, so our incoming ninth graders, that one's already ready, but the 10th, 11th, and 12th, I'll, I'll have that posted tomorrow. Please use your teachers and counselors. Ask lots of questions. That's what we're here for. If you don't know what something is, don't be shy. This presentation and recording will be posted on the website very soon. Um, and I can't stress enough for our parents and students to really utilize that parent and student view. There's a ton of information in there about specifically about your child. If you go right now, um, if you open it, you go to your student and you look at course requests, you will see recommendations that your child's um, teachers have made for their courses for next school year. This is a very helpful data point as your family is um, navigating um, what, what are the best classes, how many advanced courses should I take, or what would be a good fit for me, that teacher recommendation is a great data point. You also can see um, your student can enter their online course request if you wanna have that conversation early. If your child does not do the online course request, don't worry. The meeting with the counselor is what, is what matters where we input things on our side to make them official course requests. You can also see graduation requirements, their progress, there's a neat little chart. Um, and then you can also look at unofficial transcripts. So I strongly encourage you to utilize these resources. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment. There is another question um, in the chat about where this will be posted. My intent is to put this on the academic advising webpage. I wanna house everything in one place. And um, I will make sure that a message goes out through the Canvas page as well so that every, all the students know um, where they can access it. But please, for our, our community members that are here today, please make sure that you are sharing um, with your friends and neighbors um, where this information is so that they can engage with it as well. So we can hang out for about two more minutes. I can hang out. Um, my teachers, you've had a long day. Go enjoy your evening. Um, if you've got questions, um, please put them in the Q&A. Um, and I will get back to about the question about the Trium Honor Society. Um, but other than that, that is the end of our uh, presentation. Thank you so much for your time um, this evening. And we hope you guys have a great day and a great academic advising session. I'm gonna turn off my video, but I will leave um, the Q&A up for just a little bit if anybody has any further questions.